Happy Friday! It's probably Tuesday for you, since I think that's when we post. So let's get started. I'm gonna give you guys tips on how to set your voiceover rates. And I know that this is a very valuable video because this is the video that I wanted when I got started in voiceover. And a lot of the times whenever you ask voice actors how much to charge for your work, everyone is so hesitant to give an answer, which is very understandable because there's so many elements that go into it. It's like asking how much do I pay for a house? And it's like, well, you, there's a lot of questions to ask to even start to be able to answer that, right? So we're gonna go through some of the basics. We'll go from general to more specific and hopefully this gets you guys more on a road to be able to set rates that you're comfortable with and know how you want your rates to grow, I'm assuming, for the future. Uh, okay, first things first. We're gonna go into industry standard rates. Everyone wants to charge industry standard rates because they're great. They are a uh, solid pay for your work and it's what you can expect in the industry when you're working with agents and things like that. Um, I'll keep all the politics out of it and all the extra details that my brain is wanting to run down right now and I'll stick to the point. So this, I'm gonna have it pop up somewhere, is the link that I use whenever I need quick reference to industry rates because the field of voiceover is broken out into types of projects, which you've probably already discovered by now, like e-learning projects versus YouTube video projects versus uh, podcast spot projects versus commercial versus audiobook versus animation versus video game. There's a lot of different categories of voiceover that pay different rates. So this link will give you a very good snapshot of what the industry average is across all of these types of projects, okay? You don't have to start there. You don't have to limit yourself to it, but it's a good place to start. Next is you want to know the elements that you're gonna charge for. So all voiceover projects are different in their industries or different in their topics or whatever the word I just used was, but they are also different in how much it's gonna demand from you. So you could be the talent and just show up. Say you're going to a gig in a studio. You show up, you don't touch the microphone, you know, you just stand there, you do your job, and then you go home. You don't do any editing. You have a producer there. Those jobs are probably going to pay you more anyways. But if you're at home in your studio and you have a lot of things to do, say they want you to sync with videos, say they want you to add music to it, say they want multiple revisions and they know that ahead of time, um, the length of the project matters, what they're gonna use the project for matters, the reach that it's gonna have to their audience matters. So start thinking about what you want to categorize for. So a good thing to do is look at different platforms and see what other people are charging for, right? So for example, if you're on Fiverr, I know a lot of you guys are on Fiverr, go to the top rated sellers and browse through what things they charge for and how much they're charging and kind of find out where you are and go based off of that. Speaking of platforms and uh, looking at other voice actors, another thing that you might want to consider when setting your rates is your surrounding competition. And uh, basically, whenever you're not known for yourself, when you're not like, a famous voice actor, you're going to be compared to other people, obviously, and uh, they're going to be listening to a lot of auditions. And sometimes they will also ask for your rate ahead of time. So whenever they pitch it to their clients, if that's the method that you're going through, then they know what to tell them and you want to be competitive. So kind of scout out the people in your area. If you're on a platform, then look at the people who the thumbnails that they'll find around your thumbnail and make sure that where you're at in terms of experience and skill matches how much you're gonna charge as well. So if you have a client that you're communicating with directly through your email and you're not necessarily being compared to anyone else, then, uh, and they've reached out to you directly because they liked your voice and they scouted you out ahead of time, then you kind of bounce things off of them. You tell them what your rates are, and this is what I suggest, do whatever you want, obviously, but I think that you should always be flexible, especially if you're getting started, right? 
Money is better than no money. So you wanna know like how low is too low for you? How low is like, it's not worth it? How much do you want this specific project? Is it gonna be a lot of fun for you? Then do it. You would probably do it for free if you were a millionaire, right? And you were just doing this for fun. So kind of know where you're comfortable setting your limits, but always be flexible with your clients. Not all budgets are created equal. And it's, you know, a back and forth process to make sure that everybody's happy with the agreement that you come to. Mm -hmm. Some other elements to consider are how much time are you going to invest in this project? What is the size of this project? And as I said before, what is the reach of the project? How many people are in this audience demographic that are going to be listening to it? Um, time invested, there's a huge difference between doing an audio book versus doing an explainer video on YouTube, obviously. So if you're into audiobooks, you've probably looked at ACX by now, because that's probably the first thing that you found. And you've probably found that people either do by royalty or per finished hour. You want to know how much, uh, you want to know how much time you're going to invest per finished hour. Depending on the project, my latest uh, audiobook was very heavy in complicated names and technical language and having to do with cultural elements. So it was a much slower process than you would take with a very straightforward nonfiction read, for example, about finances or whatever it is. So you wanna know how much time you're gonna invest? For me, I average like three hours per finished hour. This book, four hours per finished hour. That's a huge leap of time depending how long that book is. So you wanna be conscientious of that. Um, so to wrap everything up, if you were to sit down right now and try and figure out your rates, the first thing to do is research, look at industry standard rates, look at the uh, pools and platforms that you have listed yourself on and kind of see where other people are sitting in terms of their rates. Understand how much time you're going to invest and just figure out if it makes sense for you. So you want to figure out your priorities. If you're on your very first project, and you just want to get a project, do it for free. Who knows? I mean, obviously within reason or whatever you want to do, but like the money is not the priority. The job is the priority. Getting someone to pay you to speak into a microphone is your priority. Then you start, you know, you collect these jobs one at a time. Now I'm just explaining to you how building a voiceover career works, but I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it. So then you start collecting jobs as you go and you want to make it consistent. Your next goal is going to be, how do I make this a regular thing? You're still probably not thinking about money yet. You're trying to make something work, right? So then you start getting jobs and your clients are very small and oftentimes very forgiving because they obviously don't have the budget to pay a professional voiceover, which is good for you. You have a, a, a pool to swim in. Then once you're consistent and your skill set is growing and you're understanding how to run your business, then you start to look at your rates and see what makes sense for you and see what's still going to be within the budget of the clients that you typically work with, but also respecting the amount of time that you've put in so far and the skill set that you're bringing to the table and how you're bringing, uh, how you're an asset to their project. So then once you start increasing your rates that way, then your time is likely going to fill up and then you have to start making choices about which projects you want to do. And you're, you know, if that's how you're, I'm assuming you want to climb your career ladder, which is make more money per project and work on big, amazing projects, then you're always looking up at where you want to ultimately be in each step to get there. And you don't scale the whole mountain in one day or week or month or year, right? This is long term. So then you slowly start building that way. And by that point, you're probably feeling pretty confident navigating how to set your rates on your own. All right. Well, I'm going to go take my bath now. So bye. <laughs>